Hello and welcome to another episode of the Rotator Cuff Expert. Uh, today we're gonna we're gonna finish up our series on infection. So we've had two parts so far. Um, this is the last part. So if you missed the first two parts, you're interested, go ahead and, and uh, look those up on uh, YouTube. So this is the last treatment. This is this is the last part, part three, called treatment. So treatment in, in uh, rotator cuff, uh, in shoulder, in general infections, uh, kind of gets separated into two things. First, the first thing would be. Um, is it superficial or is it deep? So is it on the surface of the shoulder? Is it just the incision itself infected? Or is it something deep? Is it deep inside? Is it in the shoulder joint itself? That'll really help us direct us. The first, first thing that will direct us is that. So if it's a superficial, usually we can do some wound care. Sometimes they use what's called wet to dry dressing, which means you put a little gauze pad on there with a little saline and you leave it there. And then the next day you come and you peel off, it gets dried out overnight and then you peel it off. It peels off some of the junk there and it helps stimulate the healing of a wound. It doesn't happen very often in shoulder arthroscopy because we just use little poke holes. But if you have a bigger incision, maybe for a uh, open procedure, whether it's the uh, uh, open patch or open biceps and we may have a bigger incision. And so sometimes that can happen. We have the big incision here for a shoulder replacement, uh, then that's much more common. <clears throat> it's still not common, but more common to have it in a, if you have a bigger incision. If it's superficial, oftentimes we'll put, on, put people on antibiotics. Uh, whether it's truly infected or not, or we're worried it might get infected, we might do the antibiotics to help prevent the, that infection or prevent the infection from getting worse or getting deeper into the shoulder. So that's the superficial. The deep is, is where it's, um, there's a few things we can do. So sometimes deep infection in a sick person, maybe they broke their shoulder, so we did a shoulder replacement, older, sick, Oftentimes in the deep infection we, infection, we might be able to just do suppression. What that means is put them on a low dose of antibiotics for the rest of their life. And they may do okay. A lot of that has to do with, again, the patient population, what they're like. Also has to do with what kind of bacteria they're growing. If they're growing a more susceptible bacteria, like a methicillin sensitive staph aureus, MSSA, we may be more likely to be able to give suppression than if it's something more virulent or more dangerous or more aggressive. So suppression is one. Irrigation and debridement. So that means open it up, wash it out. Or if you have a shoulder scope, again, this doesn't happen very often in shoulder scopes. To give you an example, I've been doing shoulder arthroscopy uh, as an attending. So after my training for about 14 years, um, I have maybe had one shoulder arthroscopy uh, infection, deep infection, where I had to do something about it. Uh, maybe a few more superficial infections, but as really deep infections, it's rare. It does happen, but it's rare. More often, when you do a big incision, when you do the shoulder replacement, maybe they're a little bit older, maybe they're a little bit uh, more uh, not as healthy, more what we call comorbid conditions, then maybe it happens. Still doesn't happen very often. Again, 1% or so of the time. So it's still not very often. If we have that problem and we're not gonna do suppression, we're gonna do the irrigation debridement. So we'll go in there and wash it out. If it's a shoulder scope, oftentimes that's all we'll do. We'll just wash it out. We won't do anything to the repair. Uh, when we talk about um, having a replacement metal and plastic in there, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. And this is a controversial in shoulder replacements, which is not as controversial. Well, I'd say if we do a knee replacement or hip replacement that, that gets infected, those situations, we need to take the hardware out. If we don't take the hardware out, then um, there's, a, there's a danger that we won't be able to actually clear the infection. The infection, the bacteria can make this thing called a glycocalyx, which is a, a, barrier, a barrier to antibiotics. And so they make that covering of themselves and they stick to the metal. And if we don't get the metal out, then we may not be able to get the, the bacteria out. Again, with a bigger incision, with the hardware in there, oftentimes the hardware needs to be come out. And there's another controversy, whether we do a one stage or a two stage um, treatment for an infected shoulder. So if we do, if we have an infected shoulder joint with hardware, uh, the one stage would be take all the hardware out, wash it out, clean it out, wash it out, clean it out, and then put new hardware back in. So that'd be one stage. Two stage would be take all the hardware out, wash it out, wash it out, wash it out, and then put an antibiotic spacer. So the antibiotic spacer often will kind of look like the shape of the replacement. The antibiotic is a cement, and that cement has eluding quality. So that means the antibiotic's in the cement, and over time it comes out. And that antibiotic comes out over time, and that over time can control the, control the infection. And then you go back in six, eight, weeks later, take that antibiotic spacer out and then put a new um, 
metal ball, like essentially revise it to back to a regular shoulder replacement or reverse shoulder replacement. There are situations where you might actually just leave the antibiotic spacer in. Again, if they're really sick and we don't wanna do, they're, they're, the bacteria is not um, conducive for a, a suppression, we might take the piece out we might put the antibiotic spacer in and say, you know, that's pretty good, it's about the shape, it doesn't work as well, doesn't, doesn't function as well, but maybe that's all we need to do, and we just leave it. That's again, especially for an older population, a sicker population, that might be an option. You can also just do a resection, which just takes everything out and just, and don't put anything in, right? Take the, if let's say, for instance, you have a really bad infection in the shoulder, and this is not necessarily post-op infection, but infection in the shoulder, and it begins to destroy, because that's why we don't want the infection one of the obvious things, we don't want infection in the, in the joint because infection in the joint actually can destroy the joint. And so sometimes we just take, um, we'll cut uh, the ball off and that would be a resection arthroplasty is what it's called, and then just leave it like that. So that's a possibility too. To kind of break it down, superficial, usually wound care, maybe some antibiotics, that's about it. And usually it'll heal up okay. Uh, and it'll be, it'll work well. Um, and then if we have a deep infection, if it's arthroscopic, we might wash it out. If it's a replacement, then we may just do an irrigation debridement. Uh, we might do a resection arthroplasty. We might do a one stage or a two stage uh, um, exchange as far as re trying to get the shoulder back to where it was before the infection. The big thing to know is this is a big pain in the neck if you have it. Um, and it's a long process. It's several weeks uh, in recovery and maybe several surgeries. So it's obviously something we want to avoid. So how do we avoid it? Again, we talked about this in the other videos. We avoid it by trying to have good hygiene, uh, good patient population uh, selection to make sure if you're really sick, diabetes out of control, those kind of things, then maybe this is not the right the right procedure and maybe we don't do the procedure. Um, making sure we are efficient as surgeons, make sure we do our job, but we don't we don't go any longer than we have to, meaning that we we open this, this, the, the uh, incision, we do the surgery, we close, we get out. We don't, we wanna make sure we're efficient in surgery. That's important. Uh, antibiotics before surgery, sometimes an antibiotic dose after surgery, depending exactly which surgery you're having. And then if you notice something, please talk to your doctor, talk to your surgeon. Uh, if, there, if we can, if we can uh, understand an infection early, oftentimes we can make it stay a superficial infection and not become a deep infection. So I hope this helps. Um, please like uh, this video. This video series actually is because one of one of the comments said, can you please talk about infection? So this is the reason why this in, this series is even on, on uh, YouTube. So if you have any questions, if there's something else you would like me to talk about, please let me know, put it in the comments, like it, and uh, we will see you next time. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.